one of the questions they had was from my uncle. He had brought his violin. And they're saying, why are you bringing a violin on vacation? You trying to escape? I'm Bob Nemec. I'm uh, 55. Live in Whitby. Work in uh, a company that's in, in the Toronto area that I uh, do computer programming for. I lead a computer development team. Um, have two two boys, 19 and 20, off at university. Been married for coming on 30 years. I was born in. 1963 in Brno, in the, what was then Czechoslovakia, now Czech Republic. At the time, the Czechoslovakian government was looking at liberalizing some of its policies as a communist government, and they went too far as far as the Soviet Union, the Russian government, was concerned, and they physically invaded the country um, in, order, in order to effectively overthrow the government that was there at the time. What I remember of it as a, as a child were some of the um, military events that occurred. They kind of stick with you, even though I was only, you know, just, just turned five at the time. Um, there's a couple that stand out in my mind. One was standing on a uh, streetcar platform uh, in the middle of the uh, downtown area of Brno and watching a tank come by. And I would have been short, like, you know, f five years old height. And uh, the, if you think about how the tracks of a tractor look, they're very large. So from my perspective, this large wheel was coming by. Now, I would have been maybe a foot or two away from this. Well, I'm on the platform, it's coming by, the, by me. And as the track comes down, I remember it coming down and coming where the cobblestones are. And as it got on the cobblestones, it was crushing the cobblestones underneath its weight. I remember that really noticing the, the crushing of the stones as, as the tank goes by and the weight of it goes over. My mom and I were on a streetcar, and we were sitting in one seat, got up, sat in another seat, there's like four or five people on it. And then it got strafed by machine gun fire. So the whole thing is like from a, from a tank, so large caliber machine gun fire. I remember the whole thing was shifting, the glass was blowing out everywhere. In December of 1968, my grandfather gathered the family and escaped from Czechoslovakia. I remember this as a five-year-old. So for me, it was another trip. I had traveled before. And, you know, they were really careful not to tell the children. So that was my, my cousin and myself. My cousin would have been two years older, so she would have been seven. Uh, not to tell them too much, so we wouldn't let it slip. We had split up in different groups, and one of the groups that was traveling was my uncle, my mom, and myself, and the three of us. And if you remember the classic railway car setup, where there'd be six people in a railway car, like three on each side, kind of facing each other, or, or four or something like that. I think there were six. And we're in the train, and we got stopped at the border. Normal thing and the customs people are coming through. So what I didn't know at the time was that the doll that I was holding, which was about yay big, was stuffed full of money. And they hadn't told me this, obviously. And that's, that's what I was holding as, as, we were, as we were in this railway car being quizzed by, uh, by the security or by the border patrol. One of the questions they had was from my uncle. He had brought his violin. They said, why are you bringing a violin on vacation? Are you trying to escape? And my mom perked up and concocted the story of saying, no, we're gonna go visit his sick aunt in Vienna. She asked if he could buy, bring the violin to play for her. He's gonna come back earlier and bring my son that she's gonna stay back because she was a nurse to help take care of her, and that was the whole story. Evidently, it was good enough to let us go. As that was happening, you know, my grandfather at the time had, had gone through uh, 
a challenging time in his life. Like he, he had been you know, sent to Siberia for a couple of years by the Soviet Union, um, you know, fought in the war and so on. So he had a very strong motivation to get his family out of there, looking at this as a bad turn of events historically. He gathered up pretty much everybody. There was 10 people in total. So it was my grandfather, my grandmother, six, their six kids, two grandkids and, and a son-in-law and just effectively escaped the country. At our, at our wedding, I had a chance to stand up and kind of thank everybody and say, well, you know, nice way, well, isn't this great? Thank the in-laws, all that kind of stuff. And I didn't plan this, but I just spontaneously at the beginning decided to do the first part of my thanks in Ukrainian to the, we were in a basement of Ukrainian church or the Ukrainian community, yada, yada. So I was like, okay, I'll start this way. And again, I hadn't planned this, but as I was saying it, I, I looked at my grandfather and I said, thank you for bringing us to Canada because look at the life I have now. Look at the life I got, look at the life I got, look at the wedding I got, look, look at my circumstances. Thank you. <laughs>